This is the Negro Ninja, and today I'm going to talk about some things I saw in He-Man's Masters of the Universe Revelation. Okay, and the show is taking a lot of heat, and that heat is pretty much deserved. Okay, because they're doing a lot of stuff they ain't got no business doing in that show now. The show starts off pretty fun in typical He-Man fashion to a degree, even though it's a lot of misleading and stuff going on, which is, you know, usually what happens when you let somebody that's a suspect write shit. Okay, that nigga clearly is not straight when we brought the show, but for the most part, they had He Man in the episode and they had action in it. And they actually kill and actually maim this time. Okay, so that's what make it fun. Okay, right up until the parts, and I'm gonna give y'all a lot of spoilers because you already know this by now. He Man dies in the first episode. Now, the funny thing about this is, you know, when He-Man finally uses the sword in the way you wanted to see him use it, you know, he stabs a hole through Skeletor. Skeletor baits him into unlocking some type of door or something. You know, I'm not watching it, but um, whatever happened, it revealed that Grayskull has been alive the whole time. Okay. Grayskull has been alive the whole time. Okay. You, you have to watch it, though. And then it's funny because Skeletor says you finally used that sword the way it was meant to be used. Okay, so He-Man basically unlocked the truth. Okay. And y'all already know that this is deep. Because just like the way niggas unlock the truth by battling these hoes and bitch-made niggas, basically anything that is feminine in a bad way, we unlock the truth by attacking it for attacking us. Except they made He-Man not to be, you know, a buffoon due to the consequences of what happened. You know, he was going to be responsible for destroying the whole universe or something because of that. So it's your fault, He-Man, because you unlocked the truth. You shouldn't have been trying to figure out shit. That's basically what I get from it. Niggas, y'all keep trying to figure out holes. Y'all messing everything up. <laughs> Okay, so he man basically had to sacrifice himself in order for the world to not be destroyed, or the universe to not be destroyed. All right, and what makes this deep is Skeletor was like, it's just a boy. He's been a boy the whole time. This is my power. So he ends up getting destroyed by trying to grab the power that he man had. Okay, he man just couldn't contain the power. He, you know, except. Then they do some magic or whatever. And um, I don't really understand quite what was happening, but the point is a sorcerer saved it. You already know this show is pretty much demonic anyway. Just anything in general talking about magic. Okay. But, you know, there's gems to be picked apart here. So anyway, the show basically starts off with masculinity being, you know, lost. Okay. And then, you know, an argument ensues and Tila leaves. You are lying. You all lies. And then the next time they show her, she has this little, little dyke haircut. Look like she licked pussy. You know, you know that side shit. The side shave haircut. Okay, it just looks so disgusting. Okay, and then she went some black bitch with dreads. I'm like, I already knew y'all fucked up. As soon as y'all showed a black bitch with dreads. And that's all I needed to see. And you know they gave you know that game. Basically, the whole He-Man show right after the first episode turns into Tila's show. Okay, everything that people is complaining about is accurate. Okay, I only saw four episodes. I went to sleep on the fifth. I, I saw up to the part where um she was talking to some dead niggas or whatever the hell that was in some little green part where a nigga looked like Skeletor or the predecessor to him. Okay, the show can be described as very sorrowful and preachy because everybody there is depressed. Okay, and then they just always trying to lecture, make sure you hold on to these moments. And then basically, the whole show reminds me of Last of Us Two. Okay, and so it was just less, um, it was less vulgar than Last of Us Two, but it's basically the same thing, same message, you know, same flow. All right. And He-Man dies twice. Now, once again, I didn't see the final episode yet because I went to sleep. I was getting bored. Okay. 
I'm going to watch it later on. I tried to watch the day, but that shit is boring as hell. Like, that's a boring shit. So I fast forward to some YouTube clips to where they show he may have been killed the second time. Okay, but he technically, I don't think he's dead the second time. He just gets stabbed while he's transforming into He-Man. And they did it in the most comedic fashion possible. I have the... And then he just gets stabbed in the side or something. Okay, he gets stabbed in the hip. Okay, it kind of reminds me of um what Apostle Paul went through when he came from the seventh heaven when Satan put this um, splinter on his side. He has this, you know... You got to read that scripture, but it kind of reminds me of that. So I'm pretty sure he man ain't dead. Okay, then Skeletor gets the power and becomes a Skeletor God. His design is just so horrible. Okay, don't don't y'all hate when they design stuff and they always got to have like those little green lines or something. Like, let's say, for instance, they try to make everything look similar to the Tron suit. Okay, in my opinion, that's very amateur. It's almost like they insulted my intelligence. Okay, that junk is so out of place having that lime green glow and the dude is purple. It's just weird. Okay, this is how he looked right here. It just looks so horrible to me. Okay, they didn't need all that. Okay. And this basically illustrates what happens, you know, when masculinity is not there. There's just it's just death. Okay, just sorrow, much like how people describe the womb. Okay, and I'm not saying this to be nasty to women or whatever, but we already know that we put life in the womb. You know, wound is just barren. Okay, that's why it has to be drained seven days because of the shit that they did. Okay, so it's just negative. You know, not just, I'm not going to say pause, you know, because I don't know how this is sounding. I'm just trying to put stuff in perspective. Okay, so, uh, <laughs> oh, anyway, look. You know, the vagina in many ways is cursed because of the sins they committed with whoredom in the Garden of Eden. We in this predicament because of bitches. Okay, their pussy pretty much doomed humanity. And that's just a fact. Okay, that is a promise. That's why we bless them with our penis and our seed and they give birth to another you or whatever. And so, you know, through us, life comes. All right. So, you know, this is basically what that symbolizes. You know, masculinity is out the picture, then everybody's just sad and depressed because everybody is just moping, remembering the old times when He Man was cheesy and all this type of stuff. Okay. And it's funny because people bash the old show for being so hokey or whatever. But this new show, it not only disrespects the old show, but it has the characters reminisce that there was better times. Okay, and the reason why I'm drawing attention to that is because the writer, who I believe is a Skittles person, hates He-Man. He never respected the show, which is why he did what he did. Okay, niggas a feminist as well. Okay, clearly a feminist. Okay, and he made everything masculine in that show turn out to be a joke or a lie like Grayskull, even though Grayskull looked demonic anyway, but the point is, it was tied to He-Man and his masculinity. So when he stuck that sword in that keyhole, okay, which goes back to the little point I was making earlier about giving life to bitches, um, Grayskull turned out to be an illusion and it started looking like this little crystal place or whatever. You got to see it. Um, I forgot what they call it, the true name of it. Um, is it Palace of Wisdom? I forgot what the heck it is. I'm going to have to... Um, Watching it do a breakdown one day. But yeah. Okay. Um, I forgot what I was saying before I paused it. But apparently, um what He Man unlocked was the was the orb of wisdom. And I'm gonna play this clip real quick and just give y'all a breakdown of what I caught from it. So let's look. You no! I will use that sword. Oh, yeah. As the key. Hall of Wisdom. The Hall of Wisdom. Okay, that's deep. 
really wish I could show y'all, but I just I know that they'll be trying to get me on some copyright stuff because you know they'd be on me like what a race. And to greedily protect their prize, the elders created the unknown. All right, so that's deep on many levels. Okay, so Skeletor baits He Man into ram his sword, you know, somewhere in his heart or whatever. Okay, that's what he wanted to happen. And when he said, You finally used that sword the way it was meant to be used, boy. He pushes it even further into him. Okay, and I think that's somewhat suspect when you start to think about it. Okay, <laughs> but continuing, you know, um, it, you just think about it. Okay, but you know, Skeletor represents this little evil feminine stuff anyway. So, you know, I see what, the, you know, even though the dude, I think maybe a Skittles, but I see what's going on. But it just goes to that point I was talking about earlier. Okay, so he gets stabbed and then he just falls and then they show that he man pulls the sword out the keyhole and it has blood all on it like a bitch losing her virginity or something. Very deep. <laughs> so Evil Lynn tries to walk up to Skeletor and heal him. Skeletor says, okay, much like a bitch. Niggas coming to a bitch's rescue. We can heal you. No, 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 I like pain. It don't matter. Pain ain't shit to me. <laughs> okay. And going back to, you know, that particular point, and it's like I'm saying, you know, and that's one of the main reasons why hoes try to make sure that niggas have a hard time getting the coochie. Of course, they try to make sure certain types of niggas have a hard time because once you stick your dick in her, you unlock bitch. Okay. You unlock, you know, especially if you're good at peeping it, she just get more respect for you. Okay, so she's basically trying to bait you and keep you from the prize, trying to make herself unlikable. Okay, that's what I can get from this scene as well, because look at how Grayskull looked. Okay, so when he man unlocked whatever the hell that was, it start looking pretty. Okay, that just goes to what I be talking about with holes. I'm like, she, a woman is at her best after you ejaculate over her face or something. I somehow forgot what I said a long ass time ago. She's at her prettiest after I bust a nut or something. Some that done, but it's true. Okay, things started coming together. Now you get to also see how weak a bitch is as well. Okay, they try to put on this little tusk facade like it's just so difficult. Then you stick your dick in. Ah, 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 ah. Okay. Okay, you see what makes her tick. Okay, you see what pleasures her. That's why holds is big on being in control. Like holds or rather you give. Um, how about a, that's why hoes try to pretend like they don't like stuff. They can sit up there. You can just do a chick any kind of way. Okay, like if you was giving a chick a massage or something, she'll try to like it ain't nothing. If she give you a massage, she wants you to be like, oh, you just feel so good. Okay, she feels more control giving you pleasure than to receive pleasure from you. And I got a story, a park story that I'm debating about telling. That shit pissed me off this morning. Okay, but if y'all want to hear, you know, that's not, I'm just doing it anyway, because I know you want to hear it. All right, but I guess that's all I got to say for this run. I think I can uh, probably redo this and, you know, do it a little bit better, though, but, you know, we'll see. And this has been the Negro Ninja, bringing you your Negro message for today, Negro. Out.